Treehouse of Horror 5 is the greatest Simpsons Halloween episode of all time. And, no offense to 4, but I don't think it's even that close. Treehouse of Horror 5 is so damn good from start to finish. One of the very best Simpsons episodes ever, Halloween or not. But what is it exactly that separates this one from the pack? They're all random anthology episodes after all. Why is 5 so special? Is it just a lineup of killer jokes? Is it the specific parodies and concepts they picked? Is it simply because season six in general is the bee's knees? The answer, of course, is a little bit of all these things, but I think its secret sauce is its sense of balance, that they picked three concepts that perfectly complement each other, both structurally and comedically. Like, let's consider The Shinning. First up, we have a very direct parody of a famous film, something most in the audience are at least somewhat familiar with. The writers have built-in expectations and a plot that they must adhere to. Of the three, The Shinning is easily the most rigid segment, the one that has to be carried by its execution and its Simpsons spin. This very easily could have come off as tedious and boring, simply playing all these Stanley Kubrick hits. Why watch The Shinning when we can watch the original? It's a genius choice for a treehouse segment, partially because of how seamlessly The Simpsons slides into its premise, but also because of the nature of the story. The Shining isn't the most plot-driven film in general. It spends much of its runtime establishing setting, character, and atmosphere. Like, no one describes The Shining as Jack does this, then Wendy does this, and so on. The Simpsons can give us a sort of impressionistic glimpse at the film, recreating its most famous scenes and imagery without having to be slavishly devoted to hitting a dozen plot points. Compare this to King Homer from two years earlier. To do that parody, they gotta establish Burns and Marge, do the trip to Skull Island, the capture of Kong, the presentation, and the famous building climb. It's a very linear chain of events. Whereas here, all they gotta do is arrive, have a brief tour, and the rest of it is Homer descending into madness. They have a strong sense of what stuff to recreate and what to remix. Like functionally, both of Moe's scenes are pretty faithful to the original plot points. The funny twist is how direct he is about Homer killing his family, and then how food monster Homer loses his desire to kill and has to be dragged back into it. Just little character tweaks to the established plot beats. But the best example of this is the famous typewriter scene. We get that subversive twist to the original, but instead of Marge rummaging through papers, it's transformed into this gorgeous 360 degree pan. They go for something totally different, and I love both versions of this scene. The Simpsons isn't content to do a shot-for-shot -shot remake, there is true artistry and creativity on display. Just look at those Homer facial expressions. Look at his floppy hair and Kubrick eyes. This is seriously one of the most beautiful scenes in the entire series, and I never ever get tired of looking at it. I also love the sort of dry cynicism and sarcasm to the whole affair with Burns casually remarking, that's odd, usually the blood gets off on the second floor, then telling Smithers he'll owe him a coke, Lisa wondering if Dad is going to kill them, and Marge calmly replying, we'll just have to wait and see. Willie and Bart basically winks at the audience, saying, hey, we know this is all super on the nose, just roll with it. The fact that they actually went for the name The Shinning is so silly and hacky, and I love it. It circles back around to being genius. Casting Willie in the Scatman Crothers role is brilliant, and he plays the role flawlessly. If you need someone to provide exposition and be a dead body, Willie is your guy. Also, I have to ask, do you think Homer murdered Grandpa after this moment? This is obviously a quick gag, and they don't return to it, but Grandpa totally got axed off screen, didn't he? This whole axe sequence in general is another highlight, how they merge a Homer incompetence joke while piggybacking on the pop culture reference in the original. That Homer sneer is so dang sinister. I had never actually seen The Shining until way later after I started this channel, and I had no idea that it actually ends in the hedge maze. I was so used to the Simpsons one where they run into that snowy wilderness. But knowing about it now, I appreciate the pivot. Once again, they're subverting our expectations by doing the reference but not feeling like they have to check off the boxes and copy everything. If a reference to an iconic moment isn't up to snuff, 
they're totally fine with leaving it on the editing room floor. As a result, it truly does feel like a total transformation of the original, which is exactly where you want your spooky parody to be. I just can't say enough good things about The Shining. This was always my favorite Treehouse segment, even before seeing the original. That's how strong it stands on its own. And I respected it even more after seeing it. This is anything but a paint-by-numbers remake. Interestingly, while The Shining is the most rigid segment structurally, they follow it up with the loosest and most open-ended one in Time and Punishment. Now we're going to a concept that could go basically anywhere you want with it. The audience has no preconceived expectations, and the writers have the freedom to build whatever reality they can think of. There's barely any plot to this. It's just time travel shenanigans, the Halloween segment. It might sound like I'm knocking it, but this isn't necessarily a bad thing. As long as the individual universes are funny, the segment is gonna work. The biggest danger is that all the time travel is gonna come off as rushed and incoherent, bouncing around to all these creative ideas and never fully exploring them. It could become Jingling Car Keys, the Halloween segment. Thankfully, Time and Punishment paces itself perfectly. It gives us the most substantial universe first, follows that up with a quick one, then a meteor one, then another quick one, before going into the rapid fire bonus round. There is a part of me that wishes we had more time and got to see more potential futures, but given their limitations, I'm glad they didn't go overboard and expanded upon these. No idea ever becomes stale, and they always leave me eager to see what's next. I like how the Ned Flanders one eases us into it, giving us an uncanny take on a familiar Simpsons world. How this nonsense premise is so taken for granted by everyone, and how it quickly whisks us away to the dystopian smile time and lobotomy center. It serves as the perfect kick in the pants for Homer to actively try to find his way home again. Then they insert this paradise world right smack in the middle as a breather before kicking him in the pants again. Ugh, this segment just absolutely kills me. Homer could have been so happy here. Clearly Homer has become genre savvy and was just waiting for an excuse to run away screaming. There's a punchy, manic energy that fuels this whole segment and keeps the audience on its toes. Even in the setup, how we get one tiny moment of calm before jamming Homer's hand into that toaster. Twice. This thing feels like we're riding a roller coaster with Homer, listening to him scream his head off as he navigates its twists and turns. Even during the dinosaur stuff, he never catches a break. When I was really little, I thought that, oh I wish, I wish I hadn't killed that fish, was the funniest thing ever, and I don't know why. As an adult, that joke about grandpa's wedding day advice has aged considerably better. It's such a Schwarzweldery line, and I laugh every time. My only nitpick is that maybe the lizard tongue thing isn't the strongest ending ever. Like, it's good. It's quirky and unexpected. But it's like a 7 out of 10 ending joke, while the rest of it is 10 out of 10 bangers. I have clearly become spoiled by the amount of creativity on display. You could argue that a problem with Time and Punishment is that it's not that scary for a Halloween segment. Like the Ned Flanders stuff gets pretty creepy, and Willie Death Number 2 is shocking, but tonally it plays more like a wacky sci-fi romp than anything. On the other hand, we don't need every segment in this special to fill us with dread. After all, that's what Nightmare Cafeteria is for. Okay, I don't know if this is a hot take, but I think Nightmare Cafeteria is the scariest Trials of Horror segment of all time. If it's not, I want to know what beats it. Is it the creepy vibes of Bad Dream House? The gruesome deaths of Nightmare and Evergreen Terrace? Actually, maybe this is the answer but I still vote for Nightmare Cafeteria. It's clever how, after giving us two supernatural segments, Trials of Horror 5 finishes with this gritty and sinister tale in a familiar setting. Like, it's so low concept. So much of it feels exactly like any other Springfield Elementary episode. It's very much in the vein of something like the PTA disbands. Except, you know, they're eating the students. But that's what makes it especially unnerving. Principal Skinner and Lunch Lady Doris are just trying to solve a problem in our underfunded school system. It's that mundanity of their evil, that this is their twisted version of doing their jobs. 
There's an underlying dreamlike logic to the segment that is really funny to me. Like, what is the end game of the faculty here? Is it the idea that they will eventually eat every student and new ones will keep coming in? Or do they just want to be done with their jobs and finally retire? And then Marge doesn't care at all and is idiotically telling the kids they gotta fight their own battles. And somehow none of the other parents are noticing their kids' disappearances? Yes, yes, I know. Obviously, that's the joke here. That the whole situation doesn't make a lick of sense from everyone's perspective. It's so silly and nonsensical, and perfectly captures that feeling of dream logic. Usually I hate endings where it was all a dream, but it perfectly suits this story. Bart's brain is just thinking of something uncanny and isn't sweating how much sense it makes. This is exactly the kind of nightmare Bart would have. I bet a bunch of 90s kids had this nightmare after seeing this episode. The school setting is especially great for horror because there's a built-in lack of agency to it. The kids do feel like livestock being delivered to the processing facility, just waiting for their number to be called. Forget Lisa the Vegetarian, maybe this is the Simpsons episode that made people stop eating meat. There's a ruthless efficiency to Skinner's operation, with these free-range children and this whole setup. Martin desperately thrashing against his cage is extremely disturbing. Obviously, they're following the conventions of not killing kids on screen. But somehow, it results in something even more unsettling. How they make us sit outside this door and listen to Jimbo's final moments. I don't want to imagine what's happening in that room. Stop putting me in this situation, The Simpsons. The first two segments get all the love visually with their fantastical imagery, but there is some excellent storyboarding and direction on display here. Wendell nervously knocking off his pencil, the close-up of Krabappel's eyes, the overhead shot, just beautiful. By and large, Nightmare Cafeteria plays more like a suspense thriller than anything else. Like 90% of this thing is tension and suspicion before going full-on monster movie at the very end. I could imagine another version of the story where Bart and Lisa find out at the midpoint and the second half is a dangerous chase, but this approach is much stronger. It builds in such a satisfying way. Maybe that's why I think this is the scariest segment. How it draws you in with quiet suspense and then jump scares you with their most aggressive ending ever. Forget implied violence, we're chucking the kids into a blender now. Before we leave this segment, I gotta shout out the Uter joke and Skinner's delivery. We all know this scene is amazing. It's probably the funniest joke in the whole episode, which is really saying something given the competition. I have heard from some folks who don't like the Inside Out song at the end. I admit this is my least favorite part of the episode, but that's mostly by default. A gross out chorus line number can't compete with the genius from before. I still enjoy it for its silly camp value though. It's a light chaser after such a dark segment like Nightmare Cafeteria. Maybe just look away at this part. That's not so light. There are many viewers that turn this special off when Bart wakes up. They hate it that much. Me? I'm just surprised Groundskeeper Willie finally survived one of these segments. In the end, I walk away from Trials of Horror 5 feeling like I just watched a master class on every type of Trials segment. The direct parody, the wacky adventure, the gritty murder machine. These are the examples that other trial specials should look up to. Not only did they execute each segment well, they balance out each other's weaknesses. I wouldn't want multiple segments like Nightmare Cafeteria. That would be exhausting. I don't think I'd want to watch it right after the shinning either. Time and Punishment serves as the perfect middle segment, that bouncy and fast-paced pivot that somehow binds the whole thing together. Well, actually, Willy ties things together, but you know what I mean. These three puzzle pieces fit each other perfectly, and if you tried to swap in a totally different segment, the overall picture is way less coherent and satisfying. But more than anything, I just appreciate how Trials of Horror 5 zaps the audience with a sudden shock of energy. I want to be shocked, I want to be startled, and The Simpsons doesn't always emphasize that aspect. I appreciate more thoughtful and deliberate stuff, like King Homer and Hungry Are the Damned or The Monkey's Paw, that play with our expectations and have very funny outcomes, but I come to Trials of Horror specifically for that manic energy. I want to see Homer scream and run around and make grotesque faces. 
I want to see bloody characters burst into the room. Trials of Horror 5 is one of the best Simpsons episodes of all time because, more than any other, it fully understands this assignment. The three segments complement each other well, they provide variety, and they know exactly when to bring out the axe. Hope everyone's having a fun and spooky Halloween. Thanks for watching.